Another controversial, there's a, a recent study came out from South Korea showing that um, cancer depends on fatty acid for ATP productions. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the study? Uh, I think it's not the yeah. yeah, I have a look at it. Do you have any thought on that? Um, it's very interesting because there's a lot of data around glucose and uh, cancer, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, so the fact that fa uh, cancers can use fatty acids is actually kind of interesting and rather relatively new. So mm -hmm. if you look at the way that uh, cancer cells metabolize uh, energy, there's something called the Warburg effect where they mm -hmm. use a lot of glucose. So, um, but... So there was this idea that it couldn't use fatty acids, mm -hmm. but there's been a few studies that have shown that you can. And, and, and the, the thing about cancer is that uh, certain cancers might be improved to thinking was by limiting glucose because cancer really relied on glucose. Mm -hmm. um, but if cancer can switch to fatty acid oxidation, then that's going to be less effective than it should be. And I think that's really borne mm. out because a lot of, you know, there's there's not a lot of studies that fasting can uh, sort of improve cancer. There are certain areas mm -hmm. in cancer medicine where fasting may be useful, mm -hmm. but as a sort of idea that you could starve the cancer just because you're shutting off the glucose supply mm -hmm. um, may not be apply everywhere it does apply in certain cases perhaps um but not probably in all cases cancer i think is a disease of like a, a adaptation to the different environment right yeah that's how they all started it so it could be whether it's a, a glucose or fat or yeah. less oxygen i think it, it has great adaptability it, it does have great adaptability, yeah. and that's yeah. the whole uh, idea. So the cancer code, which I, is, mm -hmm. is not, ne it, it sort of differed a little bit from my other books, the mm -hmm. obesity code and the diabetes code, because cancer is not purely a uh, metabolic disease. It mm -hmm. is partially a metabolic disease, mm -hmm. as in all diseases, but the way it develops is really, it's, it's sort of an evolution to a more primitive mm -hmm. sort of cell. And right. those more primitive cells tend to rely on glucose, mm -hmm. but they can evolve as well. So it's it's actually an evolutionary disease. Cancer is is you know we think of it as a genetic disease, mm -hmm. but that genetic paradigm's actually been wrong for many years. It's actually an evolutionary disease. These new cells are actually evolving. We know that because mm -hmm. the cells come from your own mm -hmm. original healthy cells. So if you have a liver cancer, mm -hmm. it came from your originally from your own liver cell mm -hmm. so in order for that normal cell to become a cancer cell it had to evolve in some way right and evolution is really based on the environment if you think about evolution you know macro evolution which is so you know sort of how birds and tortoises and mm -hmm. stuff evolved it's in reaction to a changing environment right um and part of that is uh perhaps the the metabolic fuels available mm -hmm. so in in a lot of cancers they do have this uh funny um warburg effect where they mm -hmm. take a lot of glucose in and produce a lot of lactic acid mm -hmm. and people always wonder why it does that um, and whether shutting off that glucose supply can work breast cancer cells for example is very interesting because Breast cancer is an, um, and, and there's clearly a link between hyperinsulinemia, which mm -hmm. is the too much insulin in the blood, and cancers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a link between obesity and cancer. There's a link between type 2 diabetes and cancer. So all those diseases where there's too much insulin. And for example, breast cancer, which is one of these obesity-dependent cancers. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer cells actually have a huge amount of insulin receptors, right? And those insulin receptors are to let the glucose in. So if you shut off the glucose and shut off the insulin, perhaps you may have a benefit to certain types of cancer. But because cancers can evolve and mm -hmm. therefore may be able to use other things such as mm -hmm. fatty acids, it may be also... It's still a known disease, right? Yeah, it's yeah. still a, it's still a, such a fascinating... Very hard to manage. Huh? Yeah, obviously it's such a difficult uh, thing yeah. to manage. Nobody can promise anything on cancer. Care. Exactly. Yeah. There are yeah. certain areas where people are looking at cancers, for mm -hmm. example, um, with fasting mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with chemotherapy, for example. Mm -hmm. That's one area where there's some interest, for example. So chemotherapy is where you take a, a drug mm -hmm. which kills 
cells. So not only does it kill cancer cells, mm -hmm. but it kills normal cells as well. Right. And the cells that tend to get killed are the rapidly dividing cells. So in the GI tract, like mm -hmm. your stomach and so on, uh, and your hair, right. we have very rapidly dividing cells. So when you take chemotherapy, mm -hmm. you kill the cancer, but you also kill off a lot of the, the cells. So you, get yeah, so you get nausea, you get vomiting, mm -hmm. your hair falls out. What fasting does, is some people use fasting in conjunction with chemotherapy by doing fasting sort of before and after, they put the cells into a more quiescent state. So when you fast, your body doesn't turn over its cells oh, quite as quickly. And therefore, those cells mm -hmm. are not going to be as affected as much. Oh. And so therefore, you might get less side effects with the chemotherapy, which allows more the chemotherapy to attack the, uh, because if you can use a higher dose, you can attack the uh, cancer mm -hmm. cells. So that might be one area, for example, where you're sort of using that uh -huh. uh, knowledge of what fasting does mm -hmm. to your advantage. And there's more studies ongoing. Um, certainly, if you reduce your risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes, both of those diseases are linked. There's about 14 right. cancers that are mm -hmm. considered as obesity-associated cancers by mm -hmm. the World Health Organization. So therefore, if you reduce obesity, it's possible that you may reduce your risk mm -hmm. of those cancers, including breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and so on. I think prevention versus like a healing is two different things. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. within... You know, when we talk about cancer treatment, mm -hmm. that's where it starts to get difficult because right. obviously cancer patients... It is already developed and, big... Yeah, and they're already tumor, more, right? more and more mm -hmm. uh, far along that. So whether a fasting could help or could not help, uh, it's still safe. It's still safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole idea. With cancer, you have to be a little more careful because people are wasting away with cancer uh -huh. cachexia, but that's a different disease. Right. Um, and and it, it's it's crazy to think that you can just eat because uh -huh. cancer cachexia is different. Cancer is basically using all the energy. If you eat more, uh -huh. so, you know, cancer, when it's growing and growing and growing, people tend to get skinnier because uh -huh. the cancer actually takes the nutrients that it needs when you're not eating it will take the nutrients from your fat cells, from your muscles, so it'll break everything down uh -huh. for energy uh, because the cancer is basically using it, right? Right. So people say, well, you should eat more. Well, okay, but except that if you eat more, you know, mm -hmm. even, even for cancer, cancer. We, we advise them right? to eat more, that's true. Huh? Yeah, that's that's the whole idea of cancer uh -huh. cachexia. It's the cancer that's growing at the expense of everything else. Uh -huh. So it's like, you want to eat, sure, I get it. We tell people to eat, 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 eat you know, eat all these nutrient supplements. Mm -hmm. But if all those nutrients are simply going you're to the feeding cancer, the you're cancer. feeding the cancer. So how is that actually beneficial? Mm. And it's a difficult problem, right? It's, 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 I'm not saying there's an easy answer, but the, the, right. the idea that you can just tell people to eat to gain more weight mm -hmm. in cancer is, is quite problematic as well. So the it's idea that you can fast and, and cure cancer is also simplistic. Mm -hmm. that, that, that often doesn't, doesn't work like that, but... You know.